Even before the pandemic, photographers had choices of in-person versus online education. Now, that situation has shifted, but we still face that same choice. Let's talk for a few minutes about how you can decide which direction you go. Hey everyone, I am here with Brian Welsh. We are at the the Craft and Commerce Conference here in Boise, Idaho, checking out this booth set up by Wave. So we're gonna talk about in-person versus online education for photographers. It's something I think is top of mind as we come off of the pandemic and events are happening again. You know, we are here at a conference in person. In a couple days, we are teaching two full days of photography education for the professional photographers of Idaho in person. We also do a lot of online mm -hmm. education. I guess in your mind, Brian, as a photographer, if I'm looking for education, why would I choose online versus in person? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a great question, and, and I'm going to play a little politician here. I'm going to give you a both answers are okay. Okay. I think uh, it's really looking at what your goal is, mm -hmm. and sometimes it makes sense to do in person because you get a chance for a deeper conversation, mm -hmm. and sometimes... The, the content may be okay online, and you get to spend the evening with your family. I, I, I can't argue with that answer. I mean, so we're here at Craft & Commerce. Obviously, there is specific programming on the keynote stage in workshops where we're learning things. But I have gotten as much value so far from this event from the happy hour conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, we both just got done having lunch with one of the speakers uh, where we got to talk about any number of things that were not part of the official conference programming. Right. And you don't get that same experience with online education. Yeah, you, you shut the Zoom off and you go about your day and you don't get that extra conversation. And honestly, not only have I gotten the value from that, it's made the whole trip totally worth it. So I can't imagine um, sitting through two days of Zoom calls, learning the mm. same content. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only way that this conference made sense. Um, but other conferences, yeah, for one hour or two hours, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Zoom could be a good option. Right. And as we've all experienced, especially over the pandemic, where many organizations and speakers were forced to adapt to online programming, where maybe that wasn't something they did previously, not all programming is equal, right? There mm -hmm. are online educational programs available, you know, kind of through formal organizations for photographers that do online programming, right? You know, Creative Live, Kelby One, um, you know, I'll drop links in the YouTube description for those kinds of things. But they do a great job. They have good production value. They have knowledgeable mm -hmm. instructors. And if you need a topic that they're covering, that's a good way to get at least a basic level of information about that topic. Now, what you lose is interactivity. <laughs> you lose the ability to, you know, hey, can you re-explain re this? I don't quite get this. Or could you help me understand how would I apply that to a specific situation or type of photography that I'm doing? Whereas you can get that when you have a, an in-person instructor. So before you go on, I think you brought up a really good point about the production value. Mm -hmm. And yes, not all Zoom calls, not all conferences, not all anything mm -hmm. have the same production value. So sometimes the experience might be better online with good production value and vice versa. So don't underestimate uh, having good audio, good visuals, um, you know, a well-lit room where the speaker actually has... Right. a light on them they're mm -hmm. not just this shadow <laughs> figure up front and same thing with zoom if if their audio is bad and they're not well lit the whole experience goes downhill mm -hmm. even though the content may be good right and that's something that i've experienced over the last few years both as a you know an attendee of zoom based events and also as someone who's hosted zoom based events is you know if you're somebody who's organizing an event or booking speakers for an event and you're looking at someone you want to book for a virtual presence, get on a Zoom call with them in advance mm -hmm. and you're going to know if they're good at that, right? You're going to see what does their lighting look like? Does their audio sound good? Are they comfortable on camera? Because not everybody who's a great in-person presenter is going to be a great online presenter and vice versa, maybe. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I also think event organizers and facilitators, you know, they can play a big role in if you are booking programming for your event, 
you know, do the legwork, find out whether somebody has the skills to be effective in that way, because, you know, they might be the most knowledgeable in their subject, but if they can't present that well, or if they're hard to understand, or if they, you know, you can't see their facial expressions because they're all in shadow, you're not going to learn the material as well as you could otherwise. Yeah. So I think there's so many layers to Mm -hmm. answering your initial question, um, (laughs) that, you really have to not look at it as just one or the other. Look at every piece of it. You can make an online experience that is exceptional, mm-hmm. meets person's needs at the moment where they're at, um, maybe at a price point that's different. Mm-hmm. But it may not actually be the best thing. It may take a little more work. Find a venue. Train your uh, you know, crew to make sure the experience is great. And then the attendee, because that's who all of this is for, is the the person that you want to educate. They get the best experience. Hopefully then they do something with the knowledge that you've Mm -hmm. helped them with. um, And then that makes the whole system better. So Right. Definitely. So let's switch gears a bit. Let's maybe explore one more area. Yeah. That was part one of a two-part conversation with Brian. Be sure to subscribe. Part two, we're going to talk all about successful hybrid events, both in person and online, what that looks like, things you might consider as a photography organization or as a photographer looking to attend one of these events. I'll be back in a few days. Thanks again.